how do we then like, you know, actually look at like not turning into what I call planet of the apps, um, planet of the apeship. Um, any bets on how many times the XCCD comic? Yeah, I, I bet uh, loads. Um, but even if you think of like, you know, things that are built on the same DID method, or even if you think about the same, they're all using Hyperledger Aries. Realistically, what you often find is that different SSI wallets or apps don't necessarily work with each other, um, or they don't necessarily work with the same backend. And so there are aspects of it which often remain quite proprietary um, that I think we need to solve for as an industry. And I think that's true for both the identity piece, but also the payment piece. And also like, you know, not to forget the fact that like a lot of people will have their own um, credentials in old, say cloud-based or like legacy, like, you know, identity providers. So how do those get migrated across? And some of the more interesting stuff that I've seen happen in the space is uh, Condatus, for instance, has been creating and as well as Matter have been creating a bridge that can translate between, say, um, OpenID Connect and verifiable credentials. Now, you're obviously trusting them at that point to say, yes, we have accurately you know, created that transform. And, and in essence, they're almost becoming an issuer on, on that particular exchange that takes place. Um, but it's quite important to look at like, how does this all tie together and work together? And the analogy that I often take in this space is, um, some of you might be familiar with a term called open banking, which is, uh, which is a standard across Europe on how any bank account provider or current account provider must give access to people uh, to be able to see, um, to, to fetch their financial transactions into their FinTech apps and so on. And so what's quite interesting is like, if I uh, have a bank account or a FinTech app, I can go into the FinTech app, I click connect to my bank account, it automatically throws me to my bank app, I approve it within the bank app, and then I'm thrown back to my actual ID wallet. And that kind of like, you know, interoperability perhaps is being thought about like, hey, this is, this is, this is, this is a verifiable credential, it's written to a standard and therefore anybody can read it. But what's perhaps not being thought about as much is I have a credential in one ID wallet and I have a different set of credentials in a different ID wallet, but the verifier is asking me for a combination of those two. So how do you, uh, how do you share that across and how do you perhaps even port between different apps? And um, that kind of like in a challenge, you know, besides the payment point, I think like, you know, comes out on its own. Um, Part of like the, you know, the answer was supposed to be, let's, let's use Hyperledger Aries. It's supposed to be ledger agnostic. It's supposed to be, it's supposed to be workable with every single verifiable data registry. And that solves interop, right? Uh, right. <laughs> um, and the reality often is that like a lot of the Aries implementations are quite strongly linked to quite specifically Hyperledger Indy and often to the sovereign network itself. Um, so one of the ways that we've been thinking about it is to work on the airy stack itself to say we are building, say, our own uh, DID method within Checked, uh, but we want to make the exchange part of that work with Hyperledger Aries so that anyone who is currently using Indie creds can continue using Indie creds, but anyone who uh, wants to use our new method can also use that within Hyperledger Aries, but more broadly. Uh, because the the DIT method that we are creating is more you know, is up to date with the uh, W3C specifications, the act of then extending that to other non-checked uh, DID methods should also be simpler. And we, you know, that's that's one of the ways that we've been trying to think about like this particular problem around uh, standards.